Welcome back, everyone. Uh, this is the Lily's Legacy Project Learning Day. Lily's Legacy Project is a project that is uh, supported by the National Lottery Heritage Fund. We thank them very much. And uh, we also thank the Jewish Museum London for streaming live today from the Jewish Museum London and Mike Beryl, the streaming master, Tom on the Zoom from Liberal Judaism. And this project is, of course, uh, uh, about the history and heritage, the radical history and heritage of liberal Judaism in the UK, uh, dedicated to uh, its prime founder, Lily Montagu. Uh, my name is Sean Knan, and I am the project manager. And uh, we are now getting into uh, the, the, the third bulk of presentations, which uh, two representatives uh, from liberal Judaism we have. First up, um, Alison Turner, who is the archivist, the liberal Judaism archivist, and then we have Rabbi Jackie Tabik, who is obviously a legendary rabbi, and I'm very glad to have her. And uh, she will be talking about um, the life and work of Lily Montagu. So first up, though, we have Alison Turner, please. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Alison Turner. I'm the archivist at Liberal Judaism at the Montague Centre. Um, I'm not trained as a, an archivist, to give you a little bit of a biography. I was trained as a librarian, <coughs> but um, I was working as a cataloguer and a, a local London borough, and I was asked to, to come and give a hand with the archives. So here I am uh, more, than <coughs> more than 10 years later reinventing ourselves as everyone as to um, how do we manage this without going actually into the archives. Um, well, I've been doing that by collecting material for the archives on the particular COVID-19 situation. So I found myself busier than ever. Um, the archives themselves of liberal Judaism date back before the earliest days of the Jewish Religious Union which evolved over time into the union of liberal and progressive synagogues and then into the liberal Judaism we know today. The scene is London in the 1890s and a young woman, the Honourable Lily Montague, is disturbed by a number of people not involved in their Jewish faith and drifting away from it. She sets out her concerns in an article which is published in 1899 and follows it with a questionnaire which she sends to several of her relatives and friends. One of, long, one of the long and detailed responses that she got was from Claude Montefiore, and he was a scholar who was to become another of the founders of the movement. The archives contain manuscripts written by Lily Montague, which is one, one of the things that I'm trying to, to show you at the moment, and Claude Montefiore, as well as typescripts and publications by them both. So we've got the letters to Anne and Peter that people talked about earlier, um, among other things that she's written, along with a lot of early material on the formation of the union, as it then was. It became clear quite quickly the new movement needed a synagogue of its own, and so a liberal Jewish synagogue was born, and Rabbi Israel Mattock recruited from the United States as its first rabbi. He became the third of the three M's, who are known as the founders of liberal Judaism. He is represented in the archives by some of his sermons and pamphlets, as well as books outlining liberal Jewish practices and beliefs. Where, um, um, our previous chief executive, Rabbi Danny Richards, you probably know, has written about uh, Israel Mattock and donated some of his sermons. I think they're in the London Metropolitan Archive now. Um, in addition to the core work, I was glad to include the history of West Central Club, which is founded by Lily Montague, which has social and cultural events, as well as the religious element. And for many years, they put on plays in the West End, and a few of the play scripts have survived and been archived, along with many of the programmes. So this includes the If I Strive Not play about the history of the club, referred to by Adam Corsini at the um, Jewish Museum in the earlier today. So the primary purpose of the archive is to document the parent body. This is done through minutes, photographs and other material from meetings, newsletters, pamphlets, prayer books and other books, and also through correspondence and ephemera. From the beginning, we have press cuttings on our services, 
meetings, reviews of books produced and other activities. There are two of Lily Montague's own scrapbooks of press cuttings on her work for the Jewish Religious Union, the Liberal Jewish Synagogue, Women's Suffrage and her beloved Girls Club, among other subjects. Our youth movement, LJY Netzer, evolved from a federation of liberal and progressive Jewish youth groups, which was formed in 1947. And the archives have records of magazines, flyers, photographs, and even videotapes of events. A highlight is a magnificent scrapbook. That was one that um, we were showing earlier, if we could have that slide back. Um, produced by the annual residential summer event, Kadima, in 2012. This is a project they worked on for many days, drawing and writing and attaching things. Ah, oh, there we go, such as feathers. It documents for participants their feelings and activities on weekdays and on Shabbat. And it's very colourful, as you see there. And an excellent record of the event. Conferences and regular get-togethers have been supplemented by public lectures and educational courses for adults, as well as for young people, and have produced a number of archive items, such as T-shirts, mugs, hats and badges, as well as the more usual posters and flyers. In later years, there have been digital photographs, but there are also extensive printed photographs of activities, people and buildings. Student work is represented by flyers and printed material, as well as packs for Shabbat and other festivals, often including recipes. And there was an oral history project in the mid-1990s, which has got which has been recorded on audio cassette tape. There are rare transcripts for those who are not familiar with audio cassettes and, and don't happen to have a player available. Social justice has always been important to our movement, but it is not always well documented as a separate issue. It is to be found within our rabbinical conference concerns, youth activities and publications, such as prayers for papers for Jewish people, and a sermon on that subject preached by Claude Montefiore in 1918 at the Liberal Jewish Synagogue. It was also included as part of our prayer books. The archives have copies of all of our prayer books, I think not necessarily every edition, dating back to the early 1900s, including Braille and large print editions. Sermons from our rabbis were collected as early as 1902, although nowadays these are mostly held by the Leo Beck College Library, where progressive rabbis are trained. As archivist, I maintain contact with the librarian at the college, as well as with the archivist at the Liberal Jewish Synagogue, the first synagogue of the movement, and the home of the headquarters for many years. Our rabbis are represented by minutes of their meetings and decisions over the years and their publications, as well as grey literature, such as flyers for the courses they have given. There are sermons and addresses, articles on issues of the day, and outlines of liberal and progressive Jewish practice. The recent admission of Cantus to join the rabbinic conference has led to its renaming as Colrack and builds on the history of songs and musical works that I was proud to be part of at North London Progressive Synagogue. The archive includes songbooks for young people and adults and some recorded music. There is a lot more available in the um, online resource bank. In addition to the records of liberal Judaism as a parent body, I endeavoured to collect significant items about our 40 communities, which are mainly in England, Scotland and Ireland, with an outpost in Copenhagen and an affiliated community in Amsterdam. So I collect histories and special services of the congregations, and the archive has correspondence on their formation and proposed new communities as well as congregations that have left the movement or closed. I advise our communities on what to collect and how to preserve it. And there's been a lot of useful guidance from the London Metropolitan Archives on this. One problem for many of our congregations is the lack of premises and staff of their own. 
So archive material may be kept at the house of one of the members. And tragically, in some cases, it's gone missing. Well, that's been known to happen to communities that have a building as well. Now that we have digital record keeping, I hope this will not be such a problem in the future. And some congregations have fine collections of their own activities online, as well as physical archives. I encourage them to pass copies of significant items to me and have been exploring local, regional, national and international options for collections. So I've been in touch with the National Library of Israel, which is collecting ephemera from the diaspora and the Anglo-Jewish archives we heard about earlier at the University of Southampton, which has taken a collection of material from and about Rabbi Bernard Hooker, Zedel, a stalwart of the liberal Jewish movement for many years in Jamaica, as well as in the United Kingdom. The recommended route for congregations wishing to pass on material from their own collections is to take a regional approach and contact their local authority records office, who will advise on what they can take. Congregations will be able to place limits on what can be retrieved by users if permission is needed and if records are to be closed for a specified period of time. At various times over the years, the previous archivist and I have passed some of our older and more fragile material to the London Metropolitan Archives, which has temperature and humidity controlled premises for it, in addition to professional staff. They have been very happy to take minute books, which were kept by gluing or taping the minutes into scrapbooks, which is not a good method for long-term preservation. The tape shrivels and falls away, the glue dries out, some of the minutes become detached from their pages, and are in danger of being lost. This has also been a problem with press cuttings, which I've tried to address by photocopying and making use of digital records from the newspapers themselves, such as the Jewish Chronicle. I use archive quality paper folders and boxes for printed works and manuscripts. These are less damaging than plastic folders. In the long term, digitization would be the way to go. Where this is a matter of having the time and funding for such a project. So these archives have been used by liberal Judaism staff, by the rabbis, by rabbinical students and researchers of all kinds, from undergraduate to postgraduate students and independent writers and scholars. So sometimes they're in this country and they come along and sometimes they say, no, 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 I'm not in this country at all. I'm in a completely different country. And I do the research for them and we scan stuff and send stuff over to them or even post stuff if necessary. Sometimes the inquiry is about a community and sometimes an individual or a cause. Items have been used for exhibitions about a community's history or the development of a movement over time. Social issues can be explored and documentary evidence of a family or person can be used for personal projects or in cases of questioning whether a person is Jewish. The archives have been consulted by those writing eulogies and those seeking to throw light on relations between liberal Jews and Zionism and how and why this has changed over the decades. Specialist projects such as Rainbow Jews and Twilight People have been supported and documented. I have been asked how I could run an archive at a distance during lockdown. And the answer has been that I was able to concentrate on the creation of records of these times for the future, which is another side of managing archives. I encourage everyone to think of the long term, even when starting a project and keep physical as well as digital records if possible and in more than one place. We look forward to celebrating 120 years of liberal Judaism next year and remembering our past gives us a solid basis for the future.